Welcome to Dark Dudes Productions. Why is this so good? But today we're putting together the One Piece crew, headed out to the Grand Line to discuss this amazing live action series, One Piece. One Piece. I'm Dr. Scott Jordan, aka Zombie Scotty. I'm a cognitive psychologist philosopher at Illinois State University. And uh, joining me in the One Piece crew is this amazing group of people you see here. Real, please tell the audience something about who you are, what you do, and what's your favorite memory of One Piece? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, my name is Rio Shigeda. I am an actor, entertainer of many kinds. I am a salesman by day, dungeon master by night, and uh, professor emeritus of anime studies at Usotsuki University. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, my favorite One Piece memory. Well, I, you know, I grew up with One Piece, honestly. Uh, mm. Oh, gee, I remember reading uh, Shonen Jump when when it was coming out. I, w I was a little one, but subscribed to Shonen Jump as a Shonen myself. Reading mm. and and honestly, like, I remember the the feeling that I got from how I was terrified of, of Kuro and, and his, <laughs> his long finger swords of uh, the, the feeling that I got when, when Sanji thanks um, Zeph when, before he leaves. I mean, mm. we were definitely going into spoilers. It, it made me feel things that I didn't know that like manga could, could make you feel yet. And, mm. and so that was sort of my experience and my favorite memory for one piece oh, that's fantastic yeah. and this idea of running into things you didn't know about life through mm -hmm. this story is this one of the things i'll talk about a lot um because i actually watched vivi's goodbye last night in the anime oh. and if yeah. you don't cry when you're watching vivi's goodbye in the anime we'll talk more about that uh later because that's something they do often but it's just so fantastic all right maisha how about you Hi, I'm Maisha. I am a cognitive experimental and quantitative psychology master's student at Illinois State University. I'm in my second year and I call myself a self-proclaimed pop culture nerd because I like to indulge myself in all, all sorts of pop culture things except for video, video games. That's the only thing I'm not into. <laughs> Other than that, everything I love. So um, I love One Piece and that's just a very general statement, but One Piece has like a lot of how do I say it? a lot of emotions for me? Because like uh, like Rio, I'm not. I was not a One Piece fan from when I was a kid. I became a fan when like 2019 to 2020 during the COVID time. That that's the time when I got into One Piece. And one of the big reason for me getting into One Piece is my friend. And uh, uh, we're he's like my closest friend. And I he used to like poke me every time like watch One Piece, uh, read One Piece, watch One Piece. I'm like, it's too long. It's like so many episodes. I don't want, I don't think I can get into it. Then like <laughs> one day after like, you know what? I will try it. And I tried it and like, I went into the Earl of Park arc and I'm like, okay, this is the thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting into it. So yeah, yeah like really whenever I watch One Piece, like it kind of reminds me of my home and right. And I, because I'm from a different country, I'm currently in USA, but now, I'm not originally from here. So it kind of reminds me of my home. It kind of reminds me of the moments that me, I spent with my friends talking about One Piece and going through like all the discussions about what's, what's Oda has it for has for us next thing, like all the, you know, uh, discussions and also those theories and stuff. So that's yeah. why One Piece is like very, very significant to me. So I'm currently caught up with the anime. So I'm really glad about it. So yeah. And yeah. I'm really excited to be here. Do you both talk about it being part of your lived life growing up, right? I mean, that's one of the challenges the live action faces is you're dealing with people's nostalgia for real. And, uh, you know, there are other shows where they get hurt because they don't deal with people's nostalgia well. Um, so the three of, oh, the three of us just are the original, I guess, One Piece crew, but it turns out we have a new member aboard. Kristen, please tell the audience a little something about who you are, what you do, and your favorite One Piece memory. All right. Hi, I'm Kristen. I am an actor, a peer bar instructor, and a realtor in Chicago. There you go. And <laughs> I'm new to One Piece. Um, so I've never watched the anime. And I live with someone 
<laughs> Little Hollywood Squares action going on. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I live with someone who watches One Piece and has right. seen all of them. And so I was a little scared to watch it, even though I was a little excited at the same time. Mm. Um, and I think my favorite part so far has been watching Rio actually really like it. <laughs> <laughs> because I love it. Yeah. I've been a huge fan of pirates yeah. for a long time. That's awesome. I mean, I was obsessed with Pippi Longstocking when I was there a kid. You go. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I've been in Pirates of Penzance twice. No way. What role? <laughs> Kate, both times. Okay. I who did I play? Oh, I was the understudy <laughs> for Friedrich. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah, I never got to do it live though, but uh, uh, did a lot of good work Sullivan in the high school days. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, welcome to the crew. We will, uh, at some point during the evening, come up with a nickname for you. Uh, if you've watched our advertising reel, uh, I am the pseudo captain, mm -hmm. Rio's the navigator, and uh, Maisha's the enforcer. So uh, as we bring new crew members into the into the voyage, we'll give them nicknames. Now, cool. what I want to quickly talk about is, you know, uh, Kristen, you mentioned that you're new to One Piece. I, I'm fairly new as well in the sense that I've probably 10% through the anime series, which means I'm at episode 130, right? Um, and I think I'm just, this sounds, you know, there are things that happen in your life that kind of make you believe in destiny where all the stars align. And it's like, for reals, you know, I started watching this show and it's like, this is precisely the show I'm supposed to be watching right now. Not just as a cartoon lover from the 60s and 70s, but as someone who loves tricksters and uh, just suddenly seeing this trickster character be the protagonist and never seeing that before in a story. What does that mean? And um, and then feeling like I was in on it. I just feel like when I watch this show, I'm in on what the writer is doing. And when they did the live action, it's like I'm absolutely certain they were in on what the writer was doing. Because even though it's a different medium, they 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 make all the right moves, they hit all the right joints, and um and uh, I think a lot of the, we'll talk about it, but I think a lot of the writing choices were amazing. So my favorite my favorite memory is just having it in my life right now, and the one thousand episodes plus is not daunting to me. It's actually refreshing because I know that for the at least the next four months, <laughs> <laughs> I can watch a couple episodes of Luffy every day and, and laugh laugh even when they're calling him stupid and we, we feel in america like they're being mean they love luffy right and they're calling him stupid and um i i just love that sensibility so yeah so there we well, are go it's ahead it's cool man. scott that you 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 bring up sort of being in on on the the gag right and and calling luffy stupid the thing that i'm really enjoying about the live action is that they embrace the stupid <laughs> <laughs> like it, this, this from, from the manga, from the get, like it's highly comical. Like, yeah. yes, there's action. Yes. There's high uh, melodramatic emotions, but like it's dumb and funny. <laughs> and that's the point. And the thing is like, if you try to read the manga in English, there's a lot that's lost in translation, I, which I is just in general how it is with humor. Yeah. But uh, manga, it helps because it's very visual and you can see when there's a joke being told, you know, yeah. even if you don't get the pun, the wordplay, like it's funny. And and I think that what what you're what we all, I think, are responding to is how they created uh, this atmosphere where you don't take it too seriously but mm. but somehow that sort of um that comfort allows you to invest in a different way than you would i love this in, invest in a different way it's exactly right it. exactly and it. and so you're along for the journey you're on that ship and and like yes it's stupid but but you're you're in you're and in they, for a penny in for in for a berry in for a pound you know yeah that 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 alternate entry point into tropes is is the brilliant part of it uh for me and so before we start getting into details and mm -hmm. telling everybody exactly what we like about the show i do want to let you know that we got some viewer mail Ooh. even off of our <laughs> already advertising the seagull we got. <laughs> has landed and on the ship i think the yep. person that sent it in is a pirate 
His name is, <laughs> or their name is Jay Jitsu. And it says, so what is this about? LOL. Which <laughs> this person should okay. join the crew, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we, we, we are missing, uh, yeah, a, a joker. And a sharp exactly. shooter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the swordsman. <laughs> you know, I have yeah. Maybe that's Zoro for us. Jay, Jay Jutsu, hit us up in the comments. <laughs> exactly. So, um, Rio's a navigator. He's the one that came up with the plan for the four adventures we're going to go through. So, Rio, mm -hmm. please go ahead and sort of lead us through today's adventure. Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a bit of a plan today, but at the same time, I, I also have a looser plan for where we're going, how we're getting to the Grand Line, so to speak. So for today, what I kind of want to do is talk about the, the characters that are featured in the first couple episodes. Um, yes, there are other characters that do appear throughout, but I think the main ones that, that we can focus on for today mm. and the first two episodes are Luffy, Kobe, and Buggy. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they all end in wise. That was completely <laughs> accidental. Um, but but I think that that it's it'll it'll set us off in a good direction. The these mm -hmm. are all three characters that will have a through line for us, and and we sort of get an idea of who they are off the bat. I also sort of want today to be our orientation, so to speak. Uh, I kind of want to figure out among us where we want to go for the next three episodes after this, you know? Yeah, yes. I have like characters set up and sort of roughly arcs divided up, but, you know, what are we going to talk about? Are we just going to talk about characters or do we want to talk about the arcs, the storyline or like yep. audience reactions, like uh, theories, well, fan we theories, got one audience you know, reaction all that for tonight. stuff. We already did it. So <laughs> we just started. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, no, I'm excited already. Yes. Um, and, and you know, I, I'm not going to take the responsibility of being the fact checker or anything. In fact, uh, if you're watching this and I get something wrong, any of us get it wrong, tell us in the comments. I'll read and them. At the and at the same time, will... yeah. this is one piece. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, I, yeah, you can't yeah. hurt my feelings. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All righty. So what are so, we going to do first? Let's let's talk about Luffy. You kind of mm. like brought it up earlier on and I'll start us off uh, him being sort of this trickster character. Right. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, hot take. I was never a huge fan of Luffy as a character mm. in the manga, in the anime. I sort of just felt like he was an iteration of this sort of absent-minded goofy happy-go-lucky character that loves to eat that's goku like that mm -hmm. that was this is a character that has already existed you know mm -hmm. um he he has ambition and like not necessarily a painful past but he he struggled in his youth which is definitely a trope that you see in main characters yeah but then like he's you know, un unbendingly positive in, in the face of any sort of adversity. And that's sort of, you know, yeah. uh, a stereotypical anime protagonist. Now, what I think that they've really tuned into with the live action specifically here is, is how bravely uninhibited he is. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think it's hard to, to, to register that this isn't just him being, silly and goofy and everything's going over his head yeah sometimes he's he's got his blinders on and all he's doing is looking at exactly what he wants to do and the way he's going to do it yeah but but what i've realized over the course of watching the live action is that he has made the choice to do that mm -hmm. you know and and it's it's hard to relate to because he made the choice when he was like five yeah and he has not bent oh he tried to stab himself in the eye and yeah, he missed. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. And I think it's kind of funny that you know he's become this this rubber person because his his will is unbendable. Well, it's um, that you know whatever you say bounces off of you and or bounces <laughs> off of me and goes to you, uh -huh. yeah. whatever that saying is a kid, you know. Um, yeah, it's funny that you keep saying he, like he doesn't bend or he's not because he's yeah, he, he all he does is bend. Yeah, but yeah. I think we just don't have people so earnest 
And so mm. it's so refreshing yeah. to watch, you know, to watch someone be so honest and just be who they genuinely are. Yeah. And we really like, I'm living for that. <laughs> and he's, ex- and he's not out there trying to tell everybody to be happy. I think this is a mm-hmm. big difference. He's telling everybody chase your dreams yeah, and the pain, there's going to be pain that comes with it, but you just work through it. And that is not a message we tend to hear in American narrative, Mm -hmm. right? You know, we hear, be happy. Well, and there's a great line, I think it's in the first or maybe the second episode where he said, well, if what you're doing is too easy, maybe you're on the wrong path, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you made the wrong choice. This is hitting pretty heavy on this idea of you're living a good life if you're able to pick your pain, right? Mm -hmm. We don't talk like that at all. We're like, chase your dreams and be happy, and Lots of um, positivity. Exactly. And we know where that ends up. And anybody that's ever tried to make anything happen in the world knows that it's work and there's pain involved. Mm-hmm. So I what I also love about this guy is he never reduces to sentimentality, right? It never reduces to sentimentality. So um one of the first things he does is slap Kobe in the face. And he says, <laughs> Kobe, you're yep. being stupid. Right. And Kobe <laughs> just told him, I I I don't know what I want to do right here. Bam, you're being stupid. Snap this is it. not what we're used to seeing because we equate somehow pain with bad, right? And and non-pain with good. But in fact, Kobe's being pushed to voice his goal through a little pain. I'm not trying to advocate for that, but what we're seeing is Luffy's not here to make you feel good. He's not here to make you happy. He's here to encourage you to get into the grand line and deal with the mess that you find there. And I just, I just find it brilliant to the point where, um, because this is the first time I've ever seen a character like that. Um, I, a Maishan friend, we talk about the show quite often. And the minute that I saw his name was monkey D Luffy, I thought of, you know, the monkey King from uh, Hindu religion Mm -hmm. and the Hindu King, the, the monkey King is a, a trickster God. And what I, what those, those religions don't tend, those religions get, I think that Christianity doesn't, if Christianity puts chaos on the other side of goodness, it puts chaos on the other side of us. And when things go wrong, chaos is bad. And, and you look at these, uh, you look at Hinduism and you look at other indigenous ontologies, chaos is what we are. And the work of living is to have it not be chaos but it's always a thin veil (laughs) it's always could be different and luffy just embodies that thoroughly everything could always be different i'm going to protect my local environment one of the only reasons he hits anyone is because they're threatening his friends you're you're threatening my local environment and i just thought wow this is this is whoever i I don't know the author's name but this is his joker each other though Right. And he, mm-hmm. he, but you see how we write chaos gods in the West, right? They're evil. The Joker's evil. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's to be kept off to the side. Whereas Luffy's, hell yes, you want him on your crew. You know, he's and, and I know people are thinking, like, what about Buggy right now? We'll get there. We'll get there. No, I, uh, I <laughs> we'll find myself being Team Luffy more and more as I get older. Um, <laughs> and uh, absolutely loving it. Yeah, it's it's uh it, amongst all the chaos, everything's connected. Um, that mm-hmm. that monkey trickster god that you're talking about, one of the iterations, one of the stories of of that monkey, uh, is named Son Goku, uh, who Goku's name was based on. Yes, it's it's all yeah. connected. It's all connected, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's that's uh, intentional. I don't know. Oh, we'll, I we'll have to ask. Uh, Mr. Mr. Oda. <laughs> well, I just saw something online because the manga is quite far, of course, from where I am. Sure. But they just came on. Uh, someone there was an article published recently that says, "Yes, Monkey D. Luffy is. I think it's Hanuman, which is the brother mm-hmm. of the Monkey King in the Ramayana." And uh, so, all right, I think I think yeah. in get, coming to grips with the fact that everything could be different is the only thing that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are things that other religions get that we tend not to in the West. And um, I, 
I, I love it. And I would definitely have Luffy on my crew. And I'd pretend he was the captain. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't you, let him make a decision for the crew. <laughs> you, you wouldn't be allowed to have it any other way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with him. Exactly. So um, we we kind of touched on Kobe, who I think is another interesting character. Mm. And uh, the title of the first episode, Romance Dawn, uh, is actually a reference to uh, a special episode that was aired later. But this is unconfirmed. I think it was the sort of uh, first draft of the One Piece storyline. Uh, so One Piece, the manga and the anime start a little bit differently uh, than the live action did. And Romance Dawn was an, uh, another special episode that was um, released later, but revisits the beginning of the story. And it is kind of what we saw, where Luffy kind of sets sail by himself uh, and and runs into Alvida and her crew. And uh, Kobe is, is on that ship. That's actually an alternate beginning, I guess, to the story. And that's what they ended up using for the live action. Mm. Uh, but I think it's it's good because uh, in this version of the story, they, they're they focusing a little bit more on Kobe. Kobe isn't as mm. heavily involved, I think, in the manga and anime uh, as a through line, at least. He does sort of reappear at, at certain points. Um, but I, I think it was a pretty good choice. Hmm. I think he makes a good counterpoint to Luffy in terms of character. They they are both sort of dead set on a goal, but at the same time, Kobe is is much more reticent. Like he does have this dream, but he doesn't know how to approach it. He doesn't, hmm. you know, have the the bravery and the resolve to like go for it. He just ends up, you know, under the control of someone more powerful and louder that that you know pushes him down and puts him in his place. Mm -hmm. um but you know his his arc is a little bit different it's mm -hmm. much more more of an a, a, a curved arc where mm -hmm. where he has more adversity and and comes up later on whereas luffy's is just a straight line again yeah. even though he's rubber he's just going the straight <laughs> stretch, line stretch, stretch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway anybody else on kobe, kobe? yeah yeah i think kobe was a great addition like i love kobe like in the anime and i think uh i'm i'm currently i'm trying to read the manga like i'm on like almost caught up but like in the anime i was i think kobe reappeared on like during the impel down arc during like, the aces arc and stuff like that so really way later so mm -hmm. i'm so glad that they tra they ended up like using kobe in the beginning of the show and giving him a proper like development to other than what's happening how he ended up becoming so cool and kind of like a, one of the hot shot in the navy later in the anime so i kind of like that they're doing it and i also like how they are using helimepo and kobe together and trying mm -hmm. to like creating a contrast and how uh, both of them are like having have an impact on each other and how kobe's influence kobe's influencing helimepo and helimepo seeing things in a better way so i kind of like that how they did it and also I also wanted to mention it in the when we were talking about Luffy that the actor who played Luffy was amazing, mm, like yes. and so is the so is Kobe because I think um, Luffy and Co Luffy is a very difficult character to play. I personally think so. I, yeah. I when they were like planning of, of the uh, One Piece live action, I'm like, okay, I get probably the other characters will be good and other characters they will probably cast someone who will somehow do the job but i was not sure about lucy at all like mm. not at all but after seeing the live action i was so happy that um it's so tough but he was able to bring out the very goofy side of lucy and that stupid uninhibited side of him too and so yeah that's what i want to talk about no i absolutely love it um I One think thing. I saw a TikTok with Inyaki Godoy. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, real go ahead. Quick, that that he was saying he he didn't get to meet Oda initially, but later on he did, and he asked him, you know, why why did you choose me? Why why did you like me? And and the Oda's answer was, you made me laugh. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That, it, you know exactly. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. When I watch um, Kobe and I watch him interact with Luffy in the first episode. There's, it already sets up the the motif for Luffy's the rest of Luffy's relationships, and that is everybody else that Luffy runs into has a an, a clear goal. 
In other words, you know, Cody wants to join the Marines. Zoro wants to be the greatest sword fighter in the world. And there are somewhat empirical ways to validate those things. You know, Sanji wants to find the all blue. We're not there yet. But I mean, these are things that once you're in that space, it's empirical. And I think I, th I think Luffy's claim he wants to be the king of the pirates is just kind of I just want to be on an adventure forever. Now, he's saying it and it sounds like, oh, that's just as, you know, that's just as empirical as, you know, being the best sword fighter. Yet we don't know what jolly roger did to prove he was the king of the pirates mm -hmm. maybe he just said it and everybody believed it. you know what i'm saying so i i like the fact that the, usually when we watch a narrative in the west everybody but luffy is who we see they're all the ones that are foregrounded and characters like luffy are the comic relief right they're mm -hmm. the ones making us laugh and the ones we're supposed to take seriously are these ones with clear goals struggling to find a lover, struggling to get a degree, struggling to do this, and putting Luffy out front just really contextualizes what it means to have a goal. And it it um it Luffy just becomes Luffy becomes the rock that they're all banging against, right? He, <laughs> you know, like when he slaps Cody. That's not what we expect from someone who's about to tell you their life dream. Oh, yeah. please, you know, this is a safe space. Feel calm and tell me what you want. No, boom, Cody, stop being stupid. <laughs> now, that's not funny all on its own. It's funny because we're expecting something else, right? But we're expecting something else because everything else we've ever seen, at least, you know, in the world of media that I've lived in. So it's like setting the Joker as the forefront. Right. How would you set the Joker as the forefront? Well, it becomes Heath Ledger and very, very dark. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're a DM, right? Ba uh, yeah. Luffy's basically chaotic good. Right. Yeah, and and, and, um, and he says, you know, if there's good yeah. pirates and bad pirates and I suspect there's good Marines and bad Marines, yeah. but that ain't the point. Right. right. Whereas right. in the traditional Western narrative, we're trying to resolve who's the good Marine, who's the bad Marine. We're trying to resolve the binary instead of keeping it going. So, I imagine that I'm going to keep watching this show for months, never have anything resolved, laugh my ass off, and keep watching people bang up against Luffy, right? And mm -hmm. I think that's just an, a massive achievement. I'm sure there's other characters like this I've never read or seen, and I'm just not aware of them. But I actually love the fact that that character is creating that space. And it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Guys, that means everything in yep. the world to me. <laughs> Watching and, a Saturday yeah. morning cartoon, that's awesome. Another way that I think that that the show embraced the stupid of One Piece is is in the, the costuming and the set design. Oh my God. Like it, it is cartoony. Yes. And it's supposed to be. You 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 can't heavily invest in how authentic it is because it, it when whenever you start feeling like mm, that's not a pirate ship that's correct because it's based on a graphic <laughs> novel a cartoon for kids yes it doesn't have to yeah and that's the fun of it the the, the, the main character stretches his arm so he has a superpower yeah. so like you, you don't have to take it seriously it's great right um but you you had sort of mentioned you know um luffy being a chaotic good character i think that and we were talking also about the foils of how they're they're setting yeah. great like foils against characters so you have you know uh luffy and and you have kobe you have luffy and you have zoro yes, and and exactly. while they're doing the same thing but with two completely different approaches now <laughs> let's talk about buggy <laughs> right um the chaotic evil chaotic yes. neutral at best at character best. 100% self-serving, Yes, does nothing for anyone but himself, but also happens to be one of the earliest characters with a, a, um, a devil fruit ability. You know, so what and it's happens... a cool ability that they handle very well in the live. Absolutely, <laughs> he's nearly invincible. Like, yes. Yes. and and it so happened to the worst. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What happens yeah. when you give a terrible person incredible power? Yeah. Right. You got to have a lot of boxes lying around. That's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And and think Tiny about it. Boxes. Like Buggy's Buggy's ambition is is in a way no different than uh, Luffy's. Totally. He, he wants to be the 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 
greatest uh, he wants to be the pirate king as well in a very different way very like different way. buggy as pirate king looks very different from luffy as pirate king you know luffy wants everyone to to follow their dream and to, yes. to you know do what they want um so long as they're not hurting anyone else buggy is everyone should worship me everyone should look at me i i am the strongest and i'm better than everyone that that is the buggy pirate king right the dictator yeah. pirate yeah sure and and I mean, look how he runs his crew. Mm -hmm. Look how he treats the people. The, the people. In the audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clap. <Yeah. laughs> While they're crying. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah, I thought the whole way they introduced him was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Complaining about the spotlight. Uh, complaining mm -hmm. being forced out of the spotlight. It's straight up narcissist. Um yet also wanting to be the pirate king, as you said. So all the different ways that being a pirate king gets defined is, is the story. I think, I think it's speaks to different ways of being a parent, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are you trying to do for your kids? Are you trying to have them be you? Or are you trying to have them be, be who they want to be and help them figure out what that means? And those two choices on a parent's part make all the difference and i'm not saying any of it's good or bad right? because uh you know you get your kid into the grand line and things may not work out well and then you feel responsible for letting them go into the grand line <laughs> and at the same time that's 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 life you know so anyway i'm blabbering right now but uh, well you're 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 actually foreshadowing i think a couple episodes forward you know mm -hmm. next time we're we're gonna start talking about usopp and zoro's stories yeah um mm -hmm. but after that when we get to baratier we're gonna start talking about uh sanji as well as um garp garp well garp garp we're saving for the the very right. end he's my favorite but, character in a live action right. by the way <laughs> <laughs> so in in uh in our series i think once we get to brought th that's sort of the uh when when you talk about narrative structure the all is lost moment right yeah. where where zoro has been uh cut down you know, uh, Nami has escaped, like the crew's mm -hmm. all over the place. And and Luffy's looking at himself and his crew and thinking, what have I done? You know, yep. I, uh, uh, I I yep. I messed up. Mm -hmm. and, and it's exactly what you're saying that like, that's the moment where he has to reconcile. Like, yep. what is what is my crew? Obviously, at this point that we're talking about, everyone's like, we're not a crew. We're, we're not friends no 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 uh, but but that's the moment when when he has to to grow up a little bit and and say what do i do as as the parent as as the captain what yeah. does it mean to be captain you yeah, know? yeah. Totally. Usopp can say all day that that he's the captain and we'll talk about that maybe next time about what that means but mm. it's it, it's responsibility that you know yep. just him wanting to be the pirate king doesn't mean he can just go and be the pirate king he's he's going to start gaining crew he's going to start building responsibilities that he's beholden to and yep. and that's sort of the growth of luffy mm -hmm. and and an interesting one because we have a character that kind of like could just slingshot his way all the way to the top with with the the how ambitious he is so long as my hands in your frame um <laughs> so we didn't know you were luffy we man high five. Right. Yeah. <laughs> am i buggy now <laughs> <laughs> More buggy than luffy. Um, there you go <laughs> but uh, the, the the interesting the most interesting i think about the especially this iteration of luffy is that we get to see very clearly the character development yeah, it's yeah. not just him um gaining new powers which is the traditional shonen jump way of of a character to uh you know grow yeah. is, is to face stronger and stronger adversaries and in that way become stronger yeah. we're seeing more of of a human character development mm -hmm. of you know what what happens when you encounter uh adversity within with interpersonal relationships yep you know, when you let people down, what do you do? You can't mm -hmm. just say, well, I'm the king of the pirates. Everything's going to be right. fine. No, you have to make choices. You have to be brave and, and you have to, you know, sacrifice at right. points in order to get to your goal. So I hope they don't, I, you guys are much further along in the overall narrative. I really don't want Luffy to become a sentimentalist. I, I, I want him to stay true to chaos 
And is if he takes on more responsibility, I want him to be able to still smack people around and say, you're being stupid. I want him to do his brand of stupid, even at larger scales, because if he becomes a sentimentalist and full of self-reflection and everything else, he becomes a Western narrative. And we, we don't need that. So I agree with you. They're going to see him. Mm-hmm. You know, we've already seen him on the show. Like, what have I done? What mm-hmm. I don't want to do is have him lose the chaos because, um, mm-hmm. Because that implies that what he was before needed to change. Mm-hmm. And I, I am concerned about that. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I think ahead. the way that I see that, uh, and, and it goes back to what you said, Kristen, earlier about um, I'm rubber and you're glue, is that I think that emotionality bounces off of Luffy and not in a bad way that he doesn't get it. I think that what happens is in reaction to Luffy, people are sentimental or or people yes. have breakthroughs. Yes. And like that's the story of each of the characters that we're going to look at yes. over over the next few episodes is like their breakthroughs, because each time a new crew member joins Luffy, they have to to lose a part of themselves they have to make a sacrifice they have to break through a barrier that they have be it Mm -hmm. physical emotional filial whatever it is and 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 then do what luffy says they should do which is to chase their dream right yeah yeah i love go ahead please do a mirror a rubber mirror. He's the there rubber mirror held their, up to nature. Their emotions, their um, <laughs> yes. all their fears, their things that come up are bouncing off of him yes. <laughs> and shown right to them. And and what he's not doing that. is becoming them by right. resonating mm-hmm. to the emotions completely. They have they're going to bang up against him all the time, and mm-hmm. that's that's what they for me they can't write that out of him. Uh, they've made some narrative commitments. For example, when um, when um, oh, Kobe says to Luffy, I don't know who I am now. Well, what's happening is that Kobe has lost his role on the pirate ship. He wants to be something. The context doesn't afford him that. And so he feels lost. He's in a state of chaos. Well, that's what Luffy is. So I can't ever yes, see yes. them writing the story where Luffy finally finds peace with himself. That that can't be what he becomes. No, it, of course, it could be what he becomes. And we'll see how they write it. But I, I'm interested to see how do you end the story about chaos, right? You either commit yourself that you can't. And then mm-hmm. how do you write that and end to that? Which I don't think this is a story that's not supposed to have an end. It's just supposed to have adventures. And um, I don't think Luffy will ever become the pirate king in any way that we can call empirical but that's just me looking at it from 10 percent of the story I don't, you know we'll see well, what well I, I i can say that no conclusion is is forthcoming in the anime there you it, go. it it has reached a point of the adventure just keeps continuing and yes. doesn't stop are yeah. we ever going to get anywhere and some i mean sometimes it feels like a stagnant adventure I I will be fully honest, but you know, <laughs> it, it, well, it, yeah. Think think of it this way: that yeah, we have to see it through to see the conclusion of Luffy's story. That's where we started. Yeah. We committed to that. We we want to see where that goes. And and Kobe, and yeah. Buggy, yeah. like the the anti hero of anti heroes. I I mean, if you consider Buggy a hero at all, <laughs> but exactly. I I think I think we have some Buggy stands. I I bet you. Let us know in the comments. Well, sure. Right. Well. <laughs> Buggy may be a clown, but he is gorgeous. And this part is acting extremely well. It is one of the better. Everybody's acting these parts in ways that are just true to the insider understanding of One Piece. Now, I'm not saying I got the special scoop, but I just feel like I'm understanding what they're trying to say. And it feels like the actors and the writers understood it as well. I even see one performance that was flat, that was not true to the spirit of the stupidity, uh, mm-hmm. but simultaneously uplifting in in the, the story's way. I it, we'll talk about Garp when we get fearless, there, but that is one of my favorite stories. Go ahead. Fearless acting. Yes. Where you're not afraid to be dumb, you're not afraid to sound stupid, be ugly, all those things, yes. and that's yes. always my favorite performances. Well said. And that, that happens all the time with American iterations of, of anime and manga stories, I think, is that Make like, 
you, you can't be worried about looking good, about being polished, because that's not the source material. And, and if you don't understand that, it's not going to work. You, mm. you, you got to be out of the box. You got to be out of the frame, um, mm. ironically, because mm. it's it's bigger than humans can be. And that's just how you have to be in order to deliver a story like this. And I think they're doing that really well so far. And yet it's still grounded in the world of what it is. Again, yeah, you're, you, 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 you are uh, put into a false sense of, of comfort mm -hmm. yeah. in, in a mm -hmm. world that is consistent with itself. It's, it's, it has verisimilitude within its stupidity. The stupidity is diegetic. It, we, we all know that this is silly and that's mm. how we're, we're, we are committing to the silliness. And that's where you find truth is, is when, yeah. when you let go of all that structure, all the veneer. And I really like you're saying we're all in on the stupidity because mm -hmm. the writers, I mean, I'm sure that manga writer took advantage of oh, that. that in scenes like, Luffy's saying to Kobe, come on, get on, we're going. And Kobe's saying, mm -hmm. I'm not going. And Luffy doesn't frown. Luffy doesn't cry and give him a big hug and say, I love you forever. You know, what does he do? He just kind of gets a wry, very adult parental smile on his face and says, that's awesome. And he says, but, you know, something like, you know, we'll be chasing each other. And he goes, but for now, we're friends. That's, That's just one of my favorite lines. Freaking adult. <laughs> we may be enemies the next time we meet. But for now, we're friends. We're friends. I love it because that's a commitment. I'm sorry, but that's a commitment to chaos. Right now, things are organized this way. Tomorrow, organized a different way. And um, I just love, and like in Kobe's character, he gets to have that kind of relationship with Luffy. He gets to have a relationship with Garp. He gets to have a relationship. And all of these are all being what they are in that space it's not like i've got to tell a story about this particular person being this thing it they all we all have different relationships with different people and i yeah yeah i'm, I'm very much a fan to the point where i've watched episode one three times and died laughing each time i just the comedy is so good the timing is so on target and that's one of the things about comedy people don't know how hard it is oh my god drama's easy compared to comedy yep. Getting people yeah. to take you seriously and then laugh? Oh, for no. Christ's sake. It's you got it. It's so easy to make someone cry. <laughs> you really basically is. just got to start is. crying. <laughs> you, exactly. You just have to start crying, and that ev evokes another emotion. Yep. Making someone laugh is the hardest thing. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. are we are we done talking about characters? I, I think we're we're we have oriented ourselves. Yeah. Um I have plotted our course. Uh we we have uh I think um packed our ship with with the goods we need to to set sail All right, and then. move on to the next uh episode. Okay yeah. then. No, well, I, I think we did that with you know little disruption. Um, you know, <laughs> little chaos. There may have Which been some worrisome. here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so the next thing on my agenda here is did uh, we ever uh, answer Jay Juice's question though? That what, oh, what is this so, even about? So, so this is the thing, man. I mean, we can because the question is, so what is this about? But it's followed by an L O L. Right. Which means that is why this is written by a pirate. Because the pirate, because right. you could take the question literally, and we could spend mm -hmm. five minutes talking about what One Piece <laughs> is about. We could also spend five minutes talking about what the One Piece crew is about. Mm -hmm. Or we could recognize that we talked about what we're going to be talking about for four <laughs> minutes, and he's trying to make fun of us. <laughs> Either way, yep. it's, it's, it's it's a pirate. So, right. uh, Jiu-Jitsu, if you're out there, please write it again. We love, we love <laughs> messages in a bottle from pirates. <laughs> <laughs> great great comedy <laughs> lol it is good comedy i mean because if the lol weren't there mm -hmm. we would have taken it serious <laughs> <laughs> and we'd have been riffing on what we think it means and turned it into a deep mystery um again this, yeah. is, this is this is about manga and anime i'm, I'm not taking it too seriously <laughs> well no, i mean it is my life Yes, but I'm not taking well, that seriously. Well, real, I think you're taking yeah. life seriously. I think I think there's a different world <laughs> nah. view here. 
In other words, you know, the thing we call order is a thin veil on top of what really is there is chaos. And to keep the chaos at bay, we've got to do all kinds of work all the time. And Luffy uh, just shows us that we're doing a lot of work. (laughs) We're doing a lot of work to be who we think we are. And uh, his who he thinks he is is pretty local. Mm-hmm. coupled with this amorphous thing i'm going to be king of the pirates man right. you know a lot of local power with an amorphous goal you can become anybody <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll see how that goes <laughs> for the rest of the story yeah <laughs> i think we lost your audio scott I'm not seeing lights on your your microphone. Which you can hear me now? My, yes, yeah. I can. Okay, so let me write down the time on the stopwatch. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I got to watch the whole thing and find it. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Um, so, okay, three, two. So one thing we have to do before we go on to our next adventure is we have to discover or come up with Kristen's nickname. So you've all spent time on her. With, oh my God. You've all spent time on the crew with her. This thing. Okay, that was comedy. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was comedy. Oh, you all dear. fell for it. Chaos. I'm a pro. Really chaos. All right. So do we have any ideas for what Kristen's nickname might be? I mean, so not to get too sentimental, but Kristen and I, um, where did we meet? Or what were we doing when we met? We were working in a restaurant. You, you All right, were don't get too ready. sentimental because Maisha's right. gonna, you know, slap you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, you know, I I already have a role here as a navigator, but uh, we were both waiters, and mm. um, uh, I, I I don't think it's it's uh, too too much to say that she is an excellent chef. I, I, right. I'm a foodie, but I do much more eating than I do cooking. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> yeah. So should we call her the chef? The chef. Or should we just call her chef? Sure. All it means right. boss, and she's the boss. It's, Who's there the you boss? go. One of okay, my so, up. <laughs> so we have a pseudo captain, we have a navigator, mm-hmm. we have an enforcer, and we have a chef. Okay. We don't have a swordsman yet or a swords person, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Jitsu wasn't that far off. That was that was pretty nice. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. All right then. So uh, as we bring the episode to a close, why don't you all uh, tell everyone where they can find you on social media if you care to do so. If you don't, that's fine as well. And we'll start with Rio. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can find me on most social media under I know Rio. Do you know Rio? Because I don't. <laughs> find me elsewhere. Google me. I don't know. <laughs> but Fantastic. yeah, uh, yeah, that's me. And how about you, Kristen? Uh, you can find me at Fun Sized Barrel on Instagram. Or if you're looking to buy a house. <laughs> Fantastic. Or a ship. Uh, or or ship. a ship. Sure, yeah. whatever. Um, you can, and Kristen Farrell, K R I S T I N F A R R E L L, Realtor. Fantastic. As well. There you go. And how about you? Oh, by the way, welcome to the crew, Chef. Delighted to have you here. How about you, Maisha? Well, none of my social media are public, so all of them are very private, so I don't think anyone can find me there. Um, I right. have LinkedIn because I'm a master's student and I'm trying to look for like a you know, potential job or potential PhD opportunity. So if anyone has that, feel free to like knock me on like my shit has an RT. That's my LinkedIn. So okay. yeah, that's the only place that you can get in touch with me. That's fantastic. Um you can find all episodes of the One Piece crew on Dark Loops Productions on YouTube. If you want to comment about what we said, please feel free to do so here on the YouTube page, just like Jay Jitsu did. And we will read it and look for more pirates um, out in the world. <laughs> you can also send an email if you like to darkloopsproductions at gmail.com. It's spelled like it sounds. And we'll be sure to read your email on air. Please understand that we are in the grand line. All right. So that means when we read your mail, we have no idea what our reaction is going to be. All right. <laughs> we're looking for a good time and we're looking for people that love One Piece. So there it is from all of us to all of you. Big hugs. And remember, we don't know what to say. 
I so, was going to say we haven't thought of something. So, to the grand line. To the grand to line. To the grand I line. Love it. All right. All right. All right. Jeff. So here's how this has got to work, though. Do not wait for me to start talking. So I'm going to give you a rhythm. So there it is. From all of us to all of you, big hugs. Remember to the grand line. They're coming on the beat. Don't wait for me. Otherwise, it's blue, 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 and it sounds like mayonnaise. Okay. All right. It sounds like mayonnaise. There you go. So there it is. From all of us to all of you, big hugs. And remember to the grand to line. The grand line. Bye-bye. We are, we are the girl.